Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting day in mathematics. Woo -woo. How's everybody doing? Good? All right, warm-up number 14 is on the screen. Let's get started, please. Uh, you will need your Chromebooks in a little bit so that you can uh, send me some, uh, some of your notes. Thank you. Copy and go. All right, let's get the show on the road. Uh, what are the measures of central tendency, Brianna? Mean, median, and mode. That is correct. Uh, and what did you get for all those three? Pass someone. Giselle, what did you get for the mean? Hands, have you got that? Looks about right. Uh, now we need the uh, IQR. Pass someone to sell. IQR. Five hands. Have you got that? That is correct. All right. Now share with your neighbor your equation to see what they got for that uh, best fit line. All right. Who went last? Serena? Pass someone? Alec, what'd you get for your equation? Plus two? Four over five X plus two. Uh, let me see hands. Who got plus two as your Y intercept? Who got plus zero as your Y intercept? Some of you. Okay. Who got plus one as your y intercept? Yeah, some of you. Okay. So it just depends on the angle that you did the uh, the uh, the line. And I'll take that uh, that slope. That's fine. All right. So copy the agenda for today. Here we go. Agenda warm up number fourteen. We're moving on statistics and probability. Today we're gonna. I'm actually gonna give you the uh, definition for stats. I started the school year giving you a simple definition. Today we're actually gonna fill in the Frayer model and uh, start talking about the different types of statistics, okay? All right, and tonight's home play, only six problems, only. Thank you, Mr. Q. You're welcome. So once again, tonight's uh, code 9K2QN. Over the weekend, you had a, a free weekend. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah that was good. All right. And tonight's home play is only six problems, but if you notice, we're kind of like moving away from numbers, now going into situations. Hopefully we understand what we're going to be presenting today. Our objective for today, I can differentiate descriptive and inferential statistics. I could, di di I could differentiate descriptive and inferential statistics. I can differentiate Descriptive and inferential statistics. Write that down. You do need a fair model. And uh, tell your neighbor what is the main idea for today. Main idea for today. Yeah, statistics. We're going to clarify a lot of those things uh, starting today just to make sure we got all the components. Stay focused, please. Like I said, this is the area that uh, gives uh, some college people problems. <laughs> And basically because we're talking about concepts and ideas, not necessarily numbers. Okay? Yes, yeah, thank you. All right, good. All right, so once again, we're going to be looking at statistics, and two major areas of statistics that we're going to be looking at are descriptive and inferential. Once again, what major areas? Descriptive and inferential. Okay? And we're going to learn how to differentiate one from the other, which one is which. Okay? Here we go. Statistics, write this down. Statistics is the science, let me repeat that again. Statistics is the science of conducting studies to collect, organize, summarize, analyze, and draw conclusions from data. Let me repeat that again. Statistics is what? The science 
of conducting studies to collect, organize, summarize, analyze, and draw conclusions from data. Now, I've been uh, hammering uh, for you guys to come up with conclusions at the end of each uh, uh, time that we present different type of data. Huh, Ethan? Yes? All right, good. And, uh, and now we've gotten used to at least looking at it and at least coming into our noodle and thinking, okay, I see this, and you come to a conclusion with the data presented. Now, what kind of data uh, have we been working with so far in regards to drawing conclusions? Well, we've been looking at all these, box plots, frequency tables, uh, standard deviation or bell curves, and uh, best fit lines. And from there, we actually made uh, summaries. And I would say, what can you conclude from there? Or can you give me a statement from what you see? And that is, like I said, part of what we're going to be looking at throughout the year. Copy those, please. So once again, statistics. What is it? The science of conducting studies to collect, organize, summarize, analyze, and draw conclusions from what? Data. Okay. It's a science, and we're collecting data and doing all that stuff. Now an example. Look up. Look at these. Tell your neighbor why this is not statistics. Why is this not statistics? Yeah, these are just functions and their graphs, and these are specific data for situations that we collected data for. Yes. All right, so copy those, and just for the sake of time, hashtag st statistics is a science, hashtag their studies, and hashtag data conclusions. Make sure you put a little asterisk. I'll put that over here on the side. I'm going to put an asterisk. And a heart, aww, because we need to remember that we need to always what? Come to a conclusion of our data. Okay. All right. Send me your prayer model as soon as you're done. I send you the screen. Not that I don't trust that you're not taking notes, but I just want to see what you wrote down. Oh, yeah, I got this. Twenty seconds. And just FYI, also, uh, I think this is the last week that we're going to have 100-degree uh, weather. Starting next week, I think we're going to be in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we're, we dropped from the 100s, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now instead of super hot, it's just going to be hot. Yeah, there you go. All right. All right, here we go. So. Writing pencil down, look up to the screen. So we started the school year, and I said data that we collect are known as values. And we said uh, we collect facts, information, calculate, analyze, and plan something using that data. And I said there's two types of data that we collected. It's categorical or quantitative. Qua categorical use, uh, cannot be using numbers. Quantitative uses numbers. For example, categorical. The data could be like favorite color. Uh, using numbers, it could be winning the lot of numbers. 
So those are using numbers or not using numbers. So once again, categorical, quantitative. So any time that you are collecting data, pay attention to this part, and pause the music back there. Any time you're collecting data, when you are focusing in a certain information that you collect, that is known as a variable. What is it known as? A variable. It's not like algebra or algebra 2, calculus and all that, that they use variables to substitute values, but it's variable to substitute the area that they're collecting data on. For example, let's say I wanted to collect data, and I said, I'm going to collect data from my students in regards to their favorite burrito. What is their favorite burrito? Well, what? guess what? Favorite burrito is known as a variable because that's the specific area of data that I want to collect. So write this down, please. Variable, a characteristic or attribute that can assume a different value. Just copy what's in blue. Don't copy the rest. Just this in blue. What is a variable? A characteristic or attribute that can assume different values. So check this out. Since categorical and quantitative, they are data, that means that favorite color or winning the lotto are what? Variables. Does that make sense? That's the area of the data I'm collecting. That's known as a variable. Let me repeat that again. Since data is either categorical or quantitative, that means that if I ask a survey for your favorite color, that's known as a what? A variable. Or winning lotto numbers. I collect numbers from you guys of what would be your winning lotto number. That's also known as a what? A variable. However, when we collect data that might change when I'm collecting it, like, for example, um, Who's seen, uh, what's that program? Uh, the Price is Right. You know at the end how they get three people and they go up to that wheel and they spin it? Do they know exactly what number is going to come up? But it's data, right? Okay, that's known as a variable, but when you don't know what the result would be, that's known as a random variable because you're collecting data at random. So write that down, please, random variable. Values determined by chance. Values determined by chance. Values determined by chance. And again, let's say we were playing the uh, roulette, and we were betting, uh, I gave each one of you $1,000 to bet on the roulette. You would give me a number from 1 to 30 or 20. I, I don't even know uh, what numbers they go to, but 20-some, right? And... Those numbers, since you gave me the numbers, but I don't know which one's going to be the result, that's why it's known as a what? Random variable because it depends on uh, the randomness or, the, or the, uh, the chance of the wheel. Okay? We good so far? Yes? All right. So, next, we're going into this. Not Costco, no, no. no. What do you call that? <laughs> When you go and get some of those, what are those called? Samples, yes. Yeah. So when we go and do data and we collect data, they're known as data, either census or samples. Okay, and that's probably the best way of presenting it, yeah. Yeah, so I'll teach. All right, so when we collect data, once again, or data samples, there's two areas that we collect by population which means the entire population, or only a small portion of the entire population that we call a sample group. And it's a small portion of the entire population. Okay? Let me repeat that again. Don't copy that, but here it goes again. When we collect data, there's two options. Population, which means the entire population, or a small portion. Now, Mr. Cube, what's the difference from one to the other? Well, if we, if we wanted to collect data for the entire population, sometimes it's a lot of number crunching. For example, let me ask you this. What would you prefer if I asked you, let's collect the ages, no, not the ages, let's collect uh, shoe size, 
two sides of the entire student population of Imperial High School and do standard deviation. Think about that one. Or we can do a sample, maybe just one classroom, and do standard deviation. What would be the most obvious that you would work with? Sample, because population at times it's a lot of work and a lot of number crunching. So do you understand the difference from one to the other and why it's used? Yes? Tell you never why we prefer sometimes sample instead of population. Why do we prefer sample instead of population? All right. So with that said, just to make sure that we understand what we're looking at, look up to the screen. Here it goes. I'm going to take a census. There's two situations. Don't write this down. Look up to the screen. Write your utensils down. Hands off the keyboard. First situation. Students at Imperial High School were asked for their favorite food. Think about it. Students at the Imperial High School were asked for their favorite food. Or, number two, students that eat, eat lunch from Imperial High School were giving the low priority for their favorite food. All right, so check this out. Think about this. We know that this is the entire what? Population. And this is a what? Sample. Tell your neighbor which one would go where. Talk it over to your neighbor which one would go where. Which one goes where? All right. Let's see. Let's go with sample. Which one is the sample? Um, Emilio. Number two is the sample. And what gave it away? What word from in there gave it away? Eat lunch. Okay. Um, and the key word here is from Imperial High School. Because some, some of you eat lunch, but sometimes you don't eat lunch from here. Some of you bring like a little snack or something from home. Does that make sense? All right, which means that this one is our what? Population because it's the entire high school. Copy this one, please. Example one. Example one, copy those two situations and write your then. Give you some time. Go. Are we good? All right, so. Understanding population versus sample from one to five. How comfortable are you up to right there so far? We got some four or fives, okay. And now for some of those that still need more clarification, yeah. Okay, you got. It. Okay. Uh, if for some of those that need more clarification, let me give you the uh, an image that I put together. When it's talking about all the students, here they are. That they uh, those are all the students. But I put an L for those that are eating lunch from Imperial, so I move those over here. So this is the entire population, and this is only the stamp. Okay? All right, let's go with another one. Here we go. Actually, hold on. Before I do that, send me your notes. Let's go. Oh, oh yeah, I got this. Screen's on your screen. Example 1Q reads, don't copy this. Situation A, total voting residents in the city of Imperial. Situation B, total residents in the city of Imperial. So once again, tell your neighbor which one goes in the population and which one goes in the sample. Which one goes in the population, which one goes in the sample. All right, fill it in uh, on the screen. Fill it in on the, on the screen, please. On your screen. Fill it in on your screen and press in. Which one is which? All right, looks like Jeremy's got it. Jeremy, where does A go? A is the sample. Why? 
Only the voting residents, does everybody vote? No. Like some of you don't vote, right? Unless you are 18 or older, right? Okay. And, of course, the other one is B, all right? From one to five, how come to are you with this so far? Yeah, we got it. Okay, let's do another one. Here it goes. Example one, Super Q. All city of Imperial police personnel who drinks energy drinks. Or B, all city of Imperial police personnel. Tell them, tell your neighbor which one's the population and which one is the sample. All right, fill it on your screen. All right. So, Giselle, which one is which? B is population and A is sample. And what gave A away for the sample? Not everyone drinks energy drinks. That is correct. So, there you go. From one to five, I'll come to you with that. Yeah, we got it, yes. Once again, um, population versus sample. Now, just to wrap this section up, tell your neighbor, why would we use a sample instead of using population data? Talk it over to your neighbor. Why would we use a sample with population? All right, so in certain situations, why would we use population, I'm sorry, sampling versus population, Alex? Why would we use sample versus population? It's less data to collect, yes, and less work. Thank you. All right, here we go. So today's objective talked about two major areas in statistics. What were they? Descriptive and inferential. So I'm going to do a Venn diagram, okay? Descriptive versus inferential. Both of them, pay attention to this part, both of them collect and organize data. Both of them do that. However, descriptive does what? Summarize using facts. Let me, let me say that again. It uses what? Facts to summarize our information. However, inferential uses estimations, hypothesis, tests, making predictions. All of that is what we know as probability because it probably will give us this. Does that make sense? All right, copy that, Ben, please, so you can have uh, that. So once again, what two major areas did we present today? Descriptive and inferential. And they both do what? Collect and organize data. However, one of them uses facts to summarize. The other one uses estimations or predictions. Okay? All right. So I'm going to give you a situation. Let me pause the, uh, the melody back there. I'm going to give you a situation. Read it. Don't say it out loud. And then think, is it descriptive? or inferential. Here it goes. It says, the average price of a 30-second ad for the Super Bowl is $2.5 million. Think about it. So if you were a business owner and you went to ask to put an ad for 30 seconds for, let's say me, my statistics class, $2.5 million, is that Descriptive or inferential and why? Talk it over to your neighbor. Is that descriptive or inferential and why? All right. So, um, See, how about um, Natalie? Is that descriptive or inferential? Close. Is there any, any guesses as to how much the price would be? 
No, this is complete, straight up data from from there. So it's a what? Descriptive. So write it on the screen, press N. Here goes another one. I'll give you some time. Hurry up, please. So this is descriptive because it's data, straightforward. There's no guessing or predicting. Okay. Next, example 2Q. The State of California Air Resource Board predicts that by the year 2035, the state will only sell electric vehicles. Tell your neighbor what that is and why. Why? All right. Write it on your screen. Press N. Which one is it? Is it descriptive or inferential? Looks like Emilio's got it. Very good, Emilio. Okay. Noel's got it. All right. Uh, Mia, what is it? Descriptive or inferential? Inferential. Why did she say inferential, Elias? Because the word predicts. Notice on this one, it's a prediction. So be careful with these. Start looking for clues. Here goes another one. A medical report states that taking statins, it's proven to lower heart attacks, comma, but some people are slight high risk of developing diabetes when taking statins. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Think about it. Talk it to your neighbor, let them know what and why. What and why. All right. Good conversations. Uh, let's see. Emilio said that he's got it. Which one is it, Emilio? Emilio says descriptive. Hands if you say descriptive. Hands if you say inferential. Okay. So check this out. If I was to stop here, it would be what? Descriptive because it's straight facts. However, comma what? Some people are slightly high risk. How much of the people? We don't know, right? So there, we have to make a what? Inference or prediction. So be careful with these, all right? Look for those commas. Look for the uh, statement, okay? Last one. Here we go. A survey of 2,234 people conducted by the Harris Poll found that 50 5% of respondents said that excessive complaining by adults was the most annoying social media habit. Talk it over your neighbor, let them know what it is, what kind of uh, data. All right. Elias, pick someone. Georgia, is that descriptive or inferential? Descriptive. Why did she say descriptive? Uh, Sean, what do you think? Because only facts are being presented. That is correct. Straightforward facts. So from one to five, how comfortable are you with the two areas of statistics? Yeah, five, five, five. We got this, yes? All right. So with that said, give me a second. All right. Okay. Later, guys. You too.